G'day and welcome. This time we're going to look at integrals that result in logarithmic functions. And of course to do that, if you've been following my uh, previous videos, we're going to start with the derivative because integration is the inverse function. So we'll start with the derivative and the derivative of a logarithmic function with a function inside, so I'll use a bracket fx, close the bracket. By the way, uh, classically, uh, going back a few decades, educated people regarded these as parentheses, those as brackets, and those as braces. They weren't curly brackets, square brackets, and round brackets. Uh, they actually had their specific names. If you ask English people, uh, literate people, what a parenthetical comment is, it's a comment that's made inside parentheses in the middle of text. They're parentheses. Those are brackets and those are braces. Uh, I used to remember those when I was at school because uh, they reminded me of the old style fireman's braces, you know, the elastic braces that held pants up. The little clips on the trousers were often shaped uh, like this with a little tab on the bottom. So they reminded me of the brace. But uh, that's just a little aside from where we're going. So we have a logarithm of a function and we're taking its derivative. Well, the derivative of a logarithm is 1 over whatever is inside. And then to complete the chain rule, the derivative of fx is f dash x. Now, I'm going to multiply as I did in previous videos by dx. And we have d of log fx is, because this is a simple product, I'm going to write 1 times f dash x on the top. So it's just f dash x over fx times dx. Integrating both sides, again, the integral is the antiderivative. It's the uh, inverse derivative. So these undo each other, and we're left with the logarithm of some function is the result of integrating this pattern, where we have some function on the bottom and its derivative on top. This is a very recognisable pattern. It's a fairly simple one. It looks complicated because it's a fraction. But in fact, uh, if you just consider the vinculum or the uh, the fraction bar separating a function from its derivative rather than having them side by side. Uh, it's quite a simple pattern. And we're going to use this, I'm going to write it up here, and we're going to use this uh, to integrate a couple of uh, expressions. <laughs> we have the two expressions that we're going to integrate and I want you to notice following this pattern we have a function on the bottom and another function on the top that happens to be the derivative of it. Here we have a function on the bottom and the derivative of this is 3x squared minus 1 and in this case that's exactly what we have on the top so this is beautifully set up to follow that pattern. This one here the derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x. And here we have an x function on the top. Uh, we'd rather have a 2 than an 8, so we need just a tiny adjustment. But this also is very close to this pattern. So let's integrate both of these expressions. This one, because it's exactly this pattern, we don't need to change. The answer is just the logarithm of whatever that function is on the bottom. So it's just the logarithm of x cubed minus x plus 11, whatever that may be, plus c of course, because again, we don't have limits, this is an undefined integral. This one here, we are going to have to adjust, we'll move the 8 out of the road, integrate, and we're going to have x over x squared plus 1 dx, 
So, so far, this equals this. All I've done is remove the 8. Now, the derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x. That's what I want there. But because I've introduced the 2 here, I have to compensate by multiplying by a half at the front. Again, you probably get tired of my saying it, but a half of 2 is 1, and multiplying by 1 won't change the value of what we get. Let's, we've finished this one, let's uh, complete this one. A half of 8 is 4, and this pattern now is exactly this pattern we have here, where we have a function on the bottom and its exact derivative on the top. Function here, and the exact derivative of that is 2x. So the result is the logarithm of whatever was on the bottom. Log of x squared plus 1 plus c, again, because it's undefined. I'm not using any uh, defined integrals or integrals with limits at this point. There it is. Quite a simple process. Now, I realise I could give a number of examples. I'm going to give one that leaps ahead a little bit. I haven't shown you how to integrate trig functions yet, trigonometric functions, but uh, I realise that most of you, or many of you, are looking at these videos because you've already learned integration and this is a revision exercise for you. So you can sometimes get a function like this. Integrate uh, sine x cos x dx. Now, at first thought, you might think this is uh, more of a trigonometric issue, but when you realise that the derivative of sine x is cos x, we, you realise that this follows this exact pattern, where the function on, on the top is the derivative of the function on the bottom. And in that case, our result is the logarithm of the function on the bottom, plus c. So we get these odd expressions sometimes, even with trigonometric functions. The thing to recognise is if you have a fraction, the first thing you should look for, or one of the things you should look for, is to see whether the top is the exact derivative of the bottom, or whether it, it only differs by a constant. And uh, in each case, that's the derivative of that, that's close to the derivative of that, and that's the derivative of that. That's the pattern we look for when we're producing logarithmic functions. I leave it to you to find other examples in textbooks and on the internet and to practice them. Uh, if you found this useful, then please like the video. Please leave your comment because they are always appreciated. And uh, I encourage you to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to this channel because more videos are coming. Uh, thank you very much for watching.